so you guys, uh, well, it was an amazing response to the plant tour post I did and to the pillia propagating post I did as well. Like to see so many of you like it and watch it and comment such lovely things on um, those two posts was really, really lovely. So they have been my most popular topics, I guess, on YouTube so far. Um, and all of the questions I had were amazing. Um, I tried to answer pretty much all of them in the comments section of the previous two videos, but I keep getting asked the same kind of questions about where I get my pots from and where I get all of my plants from. So I thought I'd kind of do a couple of short videos that gives you a little bit of inside info on that as well. So today I thought I'd talk to you about pots um, because having had a little look around the house now and kind of brought a few together I realised that actually I do get my pots from all over the place um, and there are some really cool independent ceramicists and shops and things like that that I buy from and that I source from and that I can share with you guys. So I'm just going to go through a few of my faves one by one and then hopefully you guys can find some names that you don't know and maybe find some new pots for your plant babies. So let's get on with it. First up is this one. Um, this pot is from Ikea. It's from their current range. I think it costs like two pounds um, and it comes with a little plant saucer as well, which is really cool. Um, and it's a really nice size. I think it is tw around 15 centimeters. So it's good for larger plant babies like this. I have this one which um, I actually got from John Lewis a while back and I don't know if they still sell them um, but I've got quite a few of these. Um, they were really cheap and they are self-watering planters similar to the Lechuza ones that I keep talking about um, that I have for my bigger more fussy plants um, and they have this kind of system with a dipstick. You kind of have these little measures on it that tell you how much water is in the reservoir and when it's empty like this one is um, you know to top it up. So it's like a less sophisticated version of the other planters that I have that are self-watering, but still really good. Um, I have this guy, um, super basic, 15 centimeter again, white ceramic planter, and this one, which is 28 centimeters, and the same thing. Um, these I picked up yesterday from Aldi. Um, I don't know if you all have Aldi in your respective countries, but in the UK it's kind of like a budget supermarket, similar to Lidl. And uh, this huge one was £4.99, which is crazy cheap, and the little one was £1.99. Um, so they're really good. They don't have drainage holes, so a word on pots without drainage holes is that I would make sure that you have a layer of some sort of um, gravel or pebbles or some form of substrate in the bottom, broken up other pots, you know, if you've accidentally smashed one, basically something that keeps the roots away from any water that might be sitting in the bottom of it. Um, and just keep an eye on all of those plants that don't have drainage holes because overwatering is the biggest issue with that sort of thing. But as long as you're careful, um, there isn't any reason why you shouldn't use plants without, plants? Pots without drainage holes. So another kind of easy to get hold of pot from like a high street place um, would be these. So these cute little swan planters are uh, available in this kind of standard one and also in a hanging version from Tiger. Um, I think it's called Flying Tiger now, but I know that that brand is all over Europe um, and this was about two pounds as well. So this is perfect for little cacti or succulents or like trailing vines, things like that. Um, it's super cute and I haven't found a plant for it yet. Um, then I've got one, one last pot from Ikea. Um, again, this is from the same time. This is new as well. Um, just a slightly different style of ceramic planter. Um, this is called, oh, I've still got the label on it, Senap. Um, but they do this in a bigger size in pale pink, which some of my bigger plants are in. And it is gorgeous, and I bought three, and I wish I'd bought more because I can't seem to get hold of them anymore from Ikea. They're out of stock. Surprise, surprise, because pale pink is so in at the moment, and I'm totally cliche, and I don't even care. Uh, but this is a really nice pot. I like the shape of it. Um, again, I think this costs two pounds. Uh, it's got a little saucer so that any excess water can drain out into it. But aside from picking them up cheaply in places like Ikea and Tiger and John Lewis and 
Aldi and all the kind of high street places. I also like to source some of my pots from small businesses and at handmade fairs and online via kind of craftspeople that I've been recommended or that I know. All of the rest of the pots I'm going to show you are from small businesses. This guy here is uh, from a shop online store called Holly's House based in the UK um, but the pot itself I don't think it's not made by them but they stock them and I don't recognize the stamp and it doesn't have a name but I thought that was super cool and it's actually supposed to be like a pen pot um, but yeah I'm using it as a plant pot because I think it looks cute um, this one I got a really long time ago but this is on the kind of pricier scale this is handmade um, by uh, Atelia Stella. She makes these ceramics with cute little faces on and it's kind of like her style. Unfortunately she's been copied quite a lot um, and some of the similar things have been mass produced but she did do a collection with, I think she's done one with Anthropology but she did one with West Elm as well um, for like bowls and cups and things like that which if you can't afford to buy um, the one-off pieces from her website um, might be a good thing to look out for because they'd make great planters but they are super cute. Um, I have, following along with the theme of faces, um, this guy is a super cutie um, from Megan Clark. Um, she is a um, Devon based maker. She's really, really lovely and I was still neighbours with her um, at craft fair a few years ago uh, and picked this one up from her. I think he's really cool. Um, by the way, everybody that I've talked about, all of the sources are in the details below. So if you just click the arrow to expand those, you should be able to see. And any that I can create links for, I have done to make it easy. Then we've got this guy. So this little chappy here with stars all over him and smiling heart. I made. Um, I do a ceramics course every Tuesday and basically I spend the entire course every year just making plant pots because <laughs> I love them and I have so many different plants that need new homes. So um, yeah, I would suggest, although I don't sell these at the moment, I, I might be selling a small range at Christmas, but I'd just say like if you can get onto a ceramics course and you really love plants and you really want unusual planters for them, like join a course, it doesn't cost a lot and uh, it's really good fun and then you can have your own cute little pots for all your plants. Um, this is one of my faves. This um, drippy planter here uh, is Startning um, and this is from a pal of mine, um, Alice, who runs Duck Ceramics and she's made a really big one of these for me, which I couldn't lift, um, which has a cheese plant in it in the bedroom. Um, but I just love the glazes she uses. They're porcelain, they're beautifully made and Alice is really lovely. So um, do check her out for gorgeous pots in all different colours. This concrete one, which I haven't yet put a plant in, um, is from a Scottish concrete artist called Emma. Um, she makes the most amazing um, concrete pots in all different colours. Um, and she runs Studio Emma, and I can link to her. But yeah, hers are amazing, and I think she does custom orders too, so if there's certain colours you want in concrete, um, she's your lady. They're really ace, um, and I'm going to pop pop a pot inside this because um, it's just easier with concrete um, to be able to take a plant out and water it etc. Um, I also adore, um, just watered this one so it's a bit wet, um, these little sip cup um, planters slash I think they're supposed to actually be cups but they do sip cups and they do taller ones and all sorts and this is from um, Studio Ahoy, um, who are a Copenhagen based brand. I went to visit their studio um, when I was in Copenhagen in February, but you can buy their stuff online and it ships all over the world and it's just gorgeous. And the range of glazes they have is absolutely incredible. I definitely, definitely, definitely recommend checking them out. Um, and they're just lovely. This is the Dalmatian um, glaze, I think. I also have this little cutie. Um, this gorgeous hand-thrown ceramic pot with kitty cats on um, is by another um, Devon-based artist. This one is by my friend Emma Carlyle and she just is the best illustrator of 
cute people and cute cats and animals and she's just so talented and um, she does books uh, as well, she's got several published books but also ceramics because she has her own kiln and wheel which I'm very jealous of. But yeah, her um, planters are just beautiful um, and I, I wish I could buy them all basically but I've got a couple and this is one of my faves. Um, super cute and she does them in all different shapes and sizes. I also have this little bicycle um, planter, again another handmade one. Um, this one is by Jen Collins. Um, she lives in Canada and she is an illustrator and designer and does prints and things like that but also ceramics um, and I really really like this one, it's really cute. Um, so I bought that from her a while back. Uh, this one, this one is another Devon based artist, again um, this lady Claire is awesome, she's a really talented illustrator um, and pattern maker and she um, was one of my store mates at a local craft fair and that's when I kind of found her illustrations, I've got quite a lot of her prints um, actually around the house, um, I love, love, love her work um, and she's turned her hand to ceramics too so this is one of her pieces, um, I really love it and it looks cute with this little succulent in it. So mm -mm. lastly on the handmaker's front, this one um, is a drippy planter from Brian Januski, I think I'm saying that right, um, but he is an American um, ceramicist and his kind of character style is these like ice cream drippy planters, he does them in loads of different colours and different amazing shapes and sizes that he throws on the wheel um, and I wanted one of his pieces for a really long time um, so yeah I, I love this and I haven't actually found a plant for it yet but it sits on my shelves by the TV, uh, he's very very talented. Um, and lastly, oh, try to break all my plants. Um, recommendations wise, I would say scour all of your local thrift stores and charity shops because I find so many of my amazing plant pots um, literally in charity shops for not very much money. Um, this one I think was 10 pence um, and it's really beautiful mid-century Swedish um, pot. It's really really cute and I literally have tons and tons of thrifted um, plant pots. Um, because yeah, it's nice to have unusual unusual pots in different shapes and sizes and I would say don't, like I said before, don't just look for plant pots, look for like pen pots and like cups and things like that that just, you know, would look really cute with a plant in them. So yeah, those are my recommendations. Um, other places if you want to look at more high street kind of um, shops that would sell suitable vessels for your plants I'd say also look at West Elm, Anthropology have some amazing pots, um, Habitat do some great stuff um, and weirdly Marks and Spencer home um, has some really lovely pots as well um, so check those places out um, but yeah most of all go support some small makers and buy some super unique handmade one-of-a-kind items because it's really nice, you'll treasure them forever, your plant babies will thank you and yeah it's really nice to support small businesses wherever you can. Um, so yeah, any questions as usual give me a shout in the comments below, please do subscribe if you like this, any suggestions for further content give me a shout as well um, and I will do my next plant post on where I source my actual plants from and the kind of prices of those because they vary wildly from 50p to my big uh, fiddly fig which is over there which was a significant amount more than that. So yeah I'll share all in my next post about those guys and in the meantime yeah take care speak to you soon. <laughs>